Thanks, everyone. I, I am Harry. I work in the marketing team. You've got books in front of you, I believe. These books. Not the big boxes. Got these. We've got the whole boxes. And some of you might have these. Yeah, just, I just wanted to check because it came out of my budget. I just need to make sure, <laughs> you know, like it would be really upsetting. Don't open them. <gasps> Don't open them. That's for you for later. Um, so, let me just get this set up. Here we go. Okay, right, so we've all got devices. Matt told you how many devices we've got. We've got loads of them. Has everyone here got one smartphone at least? Yes? Yes? You can shout out. I'm going to get you to shout out a lot today. Um, so now one of the things that happens when we all have lots of devices is that we need to learn how to behave in new ways. And we've all had to do more of this. We've all had to multitask more. Would you agree with that? OK, yeah. And psychologists have started to worry about this. They've started to see us doing all this multitasking. They've started investigating it. And they've, came up, they've come up with a word. The word they've coined is frazzing. I want you to remember it. It's F-R-A-Z-Z-I-N-G, frazzing. And what that is, it's frantic ineffectual multitasking. And we're doing this all the time. Matt was probably, when he was presenting, doing it on his glass device. They haven't given me one. I'm very jealous. But I thought we could do a quick test. Who here has to multitask? Hold your hands up. Everyone. Great. Now, keep your hands up. If you think you're good at multitasking, keep your hands up. OK, we've got some, we've got ah, a few confident people. That's good. You can put your hands down now. So I thought we could do a test. So on the next slide is a word. And I want you to shout out the color of that word, OK? Red. You're all pretty good at multitasking. But it's a little bit difficult. You have to check yourself. Did you feel that? That's sort of <laughs> I do a lot of that during presenting. Now, what you have to do is, actually, before I go into that, the word multitasking came from the early days of computers, when people that were programming computers started to think about, started to use them to do multiple tasks. I thought, this is amazing. They're doing them at the same time. But they weren't. They were just doing one after another after another. But they were doing it in very quick succession. So it felt, and it seemed, and I'm sure you all use computers, like it was happening at the same time. Now, we as people have to do exactly the same thing. So you see a word, you read the word, and then you stop, and you have to think, what color is that word? So you're doing two different tasks, and you have to switch directions quite regularly. Now, if you work with computers, do you all work with computers? Yep. Yep, say yes. Yep. So if you work with computers, you are likely to be distracted away from your current task every 10 and a half minutes. Does that seem about right? Jump into email, get a text message, realize that you haven't updated your status. All of those things pulling you away from what you're meant to be doing. And these same psychologists that came up with the word frazzing, look it up, it's a great report. They did a study of people, and they realized that people in offices are distracted every 10 and a half minutes, but it takes them 23 minutes to get back onto that original task. So if you think about those two things together, you're distracted, you go off, and you've been distracted tw two more times before you get back to that original task. Does that sound familiar to anyone? It's not just us. It's our customers as well. It's the people that we're trying to interact with that are having this problem at the same time. And that's really what I'm going to talk to you today. I'm going to take you through how people 
are doing different things and switching between devices and some of the things that you can think about to try and solve some of the problems that that can cause. So as we've all discussed, there's been a huge growth in smartphone usage. This year, 62% of people are using to have access to a smartphone. And in fact, PwC recently did a study that kind of ruined the research that I'm showing you now and said it's actually 75%. And so this is growing massively. Matt suggested it be 75% by the end of the year. It could be 80, it could be 90. It's pretty much there. It's at the point where pretty much anyone that you want to sell something to has got a smartphone. And we're doing loads of stuff with it. So 56% of people are shopping on their smartphones, which is a huge chunk of those people. And let's have a quick look at what that looks like. Can we switch to the Wolf Vision? It's a Wolf Vision, I love that. So can you all see my screen? Yes, great. So if I, I had to, for this presentation, a bit later on I want to show you some stuff with a Nexus 7. So I needed to get a Nexus 7. And so I thought I'll search for one. I thought about it on the bus because I'm generally, I don't use reminders, I just remember stuff at random times. It's, this is a very bad trait. So I did a search. And what the Curry's website does that I think is really amazing, really amazing, I don't think it's really amazing, I just think it's useful and everyone should do it, is when I'm typing with my little stubby fingers on a bus which is moving about so much, it starts predicting what I want. So I can jump into Nexus 7 tablet straight away. And I can scroll through, it's really nice, clear. Like one of the other things, like, have you ever been to a website, done a search for a product, and I've done this quite a lot of times because I do these sort of things for a living, um, and you type in Nexus 7 or even you know iPhone, and instead of showing you an iPhone or a Nexus 7, it shows you iPhone cases or Nexus 7 cases. Don't do that. It's just really, really bad. But, you know, Curry's are doing a good job. They bring me to exactly what I want, and I can jump through to the device that I want to buy. It's a nice experience. I can have a look at it. There's a nice offer in there. It's all the details I can add to the basket. I can also collect it in store in one hour. It's brilliant. But then I thought, I'm on the way home. I'll do something else instead. So if we switch back to the laptop. And we're doing this all the time. We're doing lots of other things at the same time. So if you think about using your phone when you're doing something else, there are two different kind of ways we do that. We can do it. We can do multitasking, where you know, you're watching one thing, you're doing something else. Or we can have complementary use. Now, when we think about multitasking, the things that people are doing whilst they're watching TV, whilst they're reading papers, whilst they're traveling, the number one thing is email. So if you're doing any high impact, time sensitive stuff, could be a TV spot, a sort of hero TV spot in a well-known program like X Factor, make sure that you're timing your email campaigns to be at the same point. So if you imagine someone's kind of sitting there, exposed to your TV ad in sort of background, but it's checking their emails, and being in pops an email from you, you're, you're, taking, them from doing, you're taking them from doing that multitasking and pulling them into a complementary use. And the same is true with internet advertising, timing that with other stuff or your internet activity. Make sure it's happening at the same time. Social networks, advertising in games, there's loads of ways that you can relate what people are going to be doing in the real world to what you're showing them. And it's really important because then you'll get much better cut through. Where was I going with this? Whoa, yep. So, I want to now talk about sequential use. So where you do one task on one device and another task and do the next bit of that task straight afterwards. And we see about 90% of people doing that. 
So 90% of people start on one device and carry on on another. It could be a tablet, it could be a phone, and they carry it on on their desktop when they get to work. We see 65% of people when they're shopping start on a phone doing some research, but then convert on their desktop. So let's see what that could look like. So if I go into my browser, which is helpfully resized, let's get that back down. Because my phone and my computer are synced together through Chrome, I'm able to see what I've been doing on my other devices on my Chromebook and also on my phone. And so I can open that exact same page and find out all of the cookies that are landing on my computer. I can land on that exact same page and see exactly where I was on my phone. Now, I didn't do anything on my phone. I didn't send that to my desktop. I just opened up my computer, and it was already there, ready and waiting for me. So if you think about your own sites and your own apps, making sure that they're linked together, that if someone signs in and puts something in the basket on an app or on your mobile site, that it lands in their basket on the desktop as well, so that if they get distracted or they get move on to do something else, you can capture them later. Now, something I also want to show you, and it's not going to be super impressive because my, my screen has already resized to a tablet size, but Curry's have a responsive design website that I think was mentioned earlier on by Matt. And <laughs> responsive design is fantastically useful because they only have to build one site once, and it just has various different breaks so that it resizes for the device you're on. So if you see, I scroll down, and then quite quickly, it just jumps into being phone size. And you can see it's a completely different experience, but with all the same information. So from a search engine's point of view, it's giving all the same rich information that you get on desktop, but in a much better user experience. And we'll be crediting that within search. And there are other ways that people purchase after doing some activity on a mobile phone. So for instance, this piece of research looked at what are the commerce actions people do after using their mobile devices. And 18% of people continued to purchase on that device, which is a fair number of people. But 24% of people found the store location and then went on to purchase in store which is huge. So if you're only saying, OK, these, this mobile stuff is a bit rubbish, the conversion rates are terrible, you're only basing it on this 18%, and you're not even crediting what's happening in store. And that's a huge issue that you need to deal with.